cold, the number one enemy of exotic plants. In this video, I'm going to explain the three different ways that cold can kill plants and how to mitigate this. Now this here is a Sheffler and this is a hardy plant, but if you're looking at it now, you're thinking all its leaves are drooping down, it's covered in ice and frost. And that is because this is a way the plant copes with these conditions. So a lot of the moisture content, the water from the leaves has been withdrawn into the stem and into the roots, allowing all the leaves to droop down this way. And this is a survival mechanism. It allows the plant to survive this really icy cold weather. And as soon as it warms up, the leaves will plump up, the water will move from the stem into the leaves and then it will look as good as new. And this is how it copes because basically it doesn't want lots of water in the leaves to expand and damage the leaves. So by taking water out of the leaves into the stem and the roots, it allows the foliage to survive the sub-zero temperatures. But if it was frozen for long enough, then there wouldn't be enough moisture in the leaves and it would potentially have drought conditions effectively and if it went on for long enough, it would damage the plant. But in the case of this Scheffler, that would be several weeks. Luckily for this specimen, it's only been, well, about four or five days. So hopefully with a, a thaw in a couple of days time, this will plump up and look totally fine. If you're growing plants in pots, it can be another story. So these Saracena or pitcher plants here are hardy in my garden to the temperatures that they will get which is down to about minus five minus six so far this winter but they can cope down to minus 10 or perhaps lower but i don't want to test them that far but these pots as you can hear are completely frozen which means all the water can't get from the soil into the roots into the plants because it can't move because it's solid ice and any potted plant which is completely frozen through doesn't matter if it's a saracena or a hardy plant a bamboo a camellia whatever you're growing in a pot if it remains frozen for too long it will mean that water can't go into the plant and it's effectively drought conditions so plants like this that do need quite a lot of water because they are bog plants i do like to keep these in water all the time these will be susceptible to dying if they're kept frozen for you know a long period of time so if you're looking at more than five six days then they'll start suffering give it a couple of weeks without moisture and they could possibly die so these now because the temperatures have been like this for five six days completely solid i'm going to probably bring them into the greenhouse just to thaw out a bit or i might put them against the house wall which is a nice sunny spot and it will allow them to defrost over the next few days and allow uptake of water so that is another way that cold can kill plants not by being so cold that it damages the foliage but by being so cold that it freezes the soil around the roots of the plant and not allowing the uptake of water and this is a main way that you normally see cold killing plants outright in this case we've got annual nasturtiums and as you can see the whole plant has completely collapsed and when this thaws it'll just be a wet soggy mush with no structural integrity no chance of this will survive and what's happened here is basically the cold has got into the leaves into the stems and as you probably know water when it freezes expands by about 10 percent or so and basically the cells in the plants can't cope with that expansion of water so the water in the cells keeps it nice and plump when it's growing if it freezes it expands like i said by about 10 percent and that literally bursts through the cell walls and physically kills the cells and destroys the plant basically so all these got no chance of survival in the case of the cannas above, you probably can see that here, same thing's happened. They've got cold, they've frozen the cells, the water's expanded and it's destroyed the leaves and it's quickly collapsed and it's browned off as well and blackened off. But the actual growing part of this plant, because it's a returning plant, is in the rhizomes and if 
the rhizomes are kept frost free because they're insulated by the soil and they will regrow next year. But this is the main way you see death in plants because of cold, because it's expanded and destroyed the structure of the leaves and the stems. And the third and final way that cold can kill a plant is by killing the more delicate center core of a plant where there's only one growth point. So in the case of most palm trees, which are on one trunk or stem, they have one growth point close to the top where the leaves emerge. And if that is killed, then the whole plant can't carry on growing because there's no growth point to carry on that growth. And the unfortunate thing about this is the growth point is more tender normally than the leaves, the trunk as well. So it means that you might get a plant looking fine. In this case, it's a jubea, so I know this one be fine, but you might have a plant looking green and happy and healthy like this after winter but the growth point right in the center there has been killed and you might not see that until spring or even into summer when you don't get new growth appearing what you might get is something called spear pull where the central leaf has been killed and rotted and that eventually comes out but if the cold has penetrated further and for longer then the actual growing point underneath the emerging spears will have also been killed off and the whole plant can die. So that's the third way that cold can kill a plant by destroying the tender heart of a plant. We also talk about plants being hardier when they're bigger and that is because it takes longer for cold to penetrate through thicker materials basically. And that's why we insulate plants, we put lots of material around plants so it, it slows down the cold getting progressively closer and closer to the plant and then into the centre of the plant where the growth material is. So in the case of palm trees obviously we protect the whole plant if we can but at least the core, the centre, the growing point if we think the cold in our area, in our climate is going to be too much for that plant to bear. So in the case of the jabea, I have not protected it at all. In the case of a briar amata, which is just behind the camera, I have put some fleece around the growth point because I don't want the growth point to get killed off, which I wouldn't see that damage, like I said, well into the following season in spring and summer. So coal can kill plants in three ways. It can prevent the uptake of water for too long to allow drought conditions effectively to take over and kill a plant that way. It can destroy the actual cells of the plant by expanding the water and killing off the foliage and stems almost overnight. And the third way is to penetrate through the center of a plant, get to that growth point and kill that. And then you don't always see that death of that growth point until many, many months later. So there are the three ways plants can be killed by cold. We can take steps to stop this by either growing plants more suitable to our location, bring in tender plants that are destroyed by frost and cold into a frost-free location. We can wrap plants to stop cold penetrating right through to the center of them. And we can stop potted plants being frozen for too long by either wrapping them in bubble wrap before it gets too cold, putting them in a sunny location next to a house wall, or allowing them to defrost in a frost-free location. If you want to see what the garden looks like after substantial frost down to minus six and seven, then check out this video where you can see the spring and summer tour after substantial cold damage.